Hi, I'm Sandra Porter from Digital World Biology. We're going to talk today about modeling the effects of frame shift or stop codon mutations in molecule world. Before we go to molecule world, let's review the process of translation. In eukaryotes, like humans, ribosomes bind to the five prime end of a messenger RNA. They move along the mRNA towards the three prime end until they encounter a start codon. The first amino acid is added when a tRNA charged with a methionine binds to that start codon. The ribosome then shifts position a little and another tRNA is able to bind to its complementary codon. Now, the ribosome, which is not drawn to scale, catalyzes the formation of a peptide bond. This process continues as additional tRNAs bring their amino acids to be added to the chain. But what happens when the ribosome encounters a stop codon? In this case, there are no complementary tRNAs to bind to the messenger RNA. So the ribosomes dissociate and translation stops. Now let's see what happens with the frame shift mutation. This image shows a six frame translation from the NCBI. We can see the six possible reading frames that could be used to translate a sequence of DNA. The three reading frames above the sequence would have the same sense as the sequence in the middle. The reading frames below the sequence would use the opposite strand of DNA. The reading frame at the very top corresponds to ORF1. The next amino acid is a serine and then an asparagine, a lysine, tyrosine, arginine, and so on. If one base was added to the DNA sequence, the reading frame would shift by one and the second reading frame would be used for translation. We can see here if that were to occur there are two stop codons towards the end that would prevent this from making a complete protein. If two bases were added to this DNA sequence we can see the reading frame would shift by two and the ribosomes would encounter stop codons right away. It's very common to find multiple stop codons in reading frames that are not used for translation. This may help a cell avoid translating nonsense proteins that might be harmful. Now we'll start working with molecule world. First, We'll go to the Digital World Biology Structure Collections. From there, we'll go to the Siamese Cat Collection. We'll download the collection, open it in Molecule World. This collection focuses on the enzyme tyrosinase. Tyrosinase converts the amino acid tyrosine to dopaquinone, which we can see here, and it converts dopaquinone to melanin, which is a dark colored compound. The tyrosinase structure we'll work with is a bacterial enzyme from Bacillus megatherium. If I open the sequence viewer, and I highlight the row with the chemicals, we can see the tyrosine and we can see two zinc atoms. One zinc is bound to tyrosine and the other is not. The zinc functions as a cofactor. Now I'm going to change the drawing style to space fill so I can highlight these chemicals and I'm going to set the lock so they won't change and it'll be easier to see them later on. 
Now if I change the drawing style and coloring style to molecule and space fill, I can see the two subunits of the tyrosinase enzyme, and I can see where the zinc and the substrate, the tyrosine substrate, are sitting in the protein. I can also see the region where the two subunits are interacting. If I change this to rainbow, I see there are different colors that help me identify the different regions. Now I'm going to go to the other tyrosinase enzyme. It's the same thing, and I'm going to set it up for modeling later on. So I do the same thing. I make the chemical space fill. I lock it. I change the drawing style to space fill, coloring to rainbow. And lastly, I deselect both of the protein chains so I can select them later on when I'm working with the model. Now we're going to go to BLAST. We're going to use BLAST-X to help us identify what happens with the frame shift. So I click the box to let me align two or more sequences. I paste my tyrosinase mRNA sequence in the query field. I already know this sequence contains a frame shift, by the way. And now I'll type the PDB ID along with the name of one of the protein chains in the field for the subject sequence. This will retrieve the protein sequence from the database for the bacillus tyrosinase structure. Lastly, I click BLAST to run the program. And we can see the results. We can see there is a long aligned region almost to a nucleotide 755 or so, colored in red. And after that, there was a frame shift. We can see that same alignment here. We can see it starts at amino acid 1 in the protein and continues until amino acid 253 in the protein, which is, I guess, about nucleotide 768 in our query sequence that got translated. These amino acids would have been in the region after the frame shift occurred. Now we're going to begin our modeling. To do this, I want to be able to hide the amino acids that would be lost because of the frame shift. Those are the ones in the second alignment between amino acids 251 to 287. I'm going to hide those by highlighting the amino acids that remain. By selecting the aligned sequences in the front row, I go to Molecule World, I open the selection menu, and paste those sequences in the Select Pattern box to s highlight those sequences. Then I repeat the process. I go to the next row, copy, find those sequences in the protein in Molecule World, the next row, paste in those sequences in the Select Pattern box, And I repeat this until I've highlighted all the amino acids that remain in the protein after the frame shift. At this point, I want to see what sequences would be lost by the frame shift. So I turn the structure around and I look to see which sequences are dim. Those are the ones that would be lost. And now I want to hide them so that I can model the effect of the frame shift. So I open the Show Hide menu, I click Hide Unselected, and those sequences are gone, just like they would be in the frame shift mutation. Now I can compare the normal protein, which still has those sequences, and I can see where they're located. It looks like they're in a part where they interact with the other subunit. I can even show all the atoms in the residue to show that, yes, those would be parts of the protein that are involved in interacting with the other subunit. And I can compare this again to my frame shift model and show that those parts would be missing. And I can tell this because of the color. Hiding the sequences that would have been lost because of the frame shift helps me explain why this enzyme has less activity. 
I can see that sequences that were lost were sequences that were important in holding the two subunits together. Since those were lost, the interaction between the two subunits is weakened, and thus the enzyme has less activity.